Good day to you. Today I am going to teach you subject food safety and quality semester third semester second year. Today I am going to teach you unit three food contamination and spoilage. Let's talk about this in detail. Talk about the food. Food is classified into three: perishable, semi-perishable, non-perishable. Let's start with non-perishable or stable food. These food do not spoil at room temperature for about six months to one year if stored properly. Take an example of tea, coffee, cereal, pulses, rice, pickles, jam, jellies, where you are adding preservatives like natural preservatives as well as artificial preservatives. Natural preservatives like oil and uh, salt, Whereas artificial preservatives where you are adding citric acid or different kinds of artificial preservatives which you are adding to preserve the food for about six months to one year. So this is said to be a non-perishable food. Talking about semi-perishable food, they do not spoil for about 10 to 15 days if stored in a cool dry place. Example, citric acid, citric fruits, biscuits, flour, potatoes, onions, and apples. Next is the perishable food. This food spoils within four hours. They reach the danger zone temperature that is four to 63 degrees Celsius. So this food have to be stored carefully in a refrigerator or a deep freezer. Example, milk and milk products like uh, butter, cheese, fish, meat, chicken, pork, beef, etc. So as you have done with the food, next we are going to talk about contamination. Contamination when an inedible or foreign particle falls into the food, it is said to be contamination. Example, microorganisms or you can say uh, pin, soil, hair or any chemical contaminant which is deliberately added into the food to increase the shelf life of the product is said to be contamination. Contamination is of three types, physical, biological and chemical. Physical contaminants include bones, chips, needles, stones, and glass pieces. Biological contaminants include microorganisms, toxic plants, and animals. Chemical contaminants include antibiotics, pesticides, insecticides, cleaning compounds, as well as deliberately you are adding MSG, monosodium glutamate, or aginomoto to increase the shelf life or taste or flavor of the food. Sources of contaminants. How does this biological, physical or chemical contaminants enter into the food? Through human beings, through pests, pets, chemicals, garbage, as well as equipments. Not using a clean equipment, using one equipment for various purposes like using for raw as well as cooked, etc. So these contaminants like biological, physical, chemical enter into the food. Next is cross contamination. Transfer of bacteria from raw food to cooked food is said to be cross contamination. Generally, these food have to be stored carefully, starting from receiving till the service. So while you're purchasing raw and cooked food should be kept away, while storing raw and cooked food should be kept away, while uh, pre-preparation or misemplant raw and cooked food should be kept away, and while cooking as well as while serving. But how does this raw and cooked food come in contact? By using the same chopping board, using one chopping board, like using a white color chopping board for various raw and cooked products, using one knife for raw and cooked products, or using same utensils, equipments, work surfaces, dishcloths, hands of the food handlers, drops of liquid oozing from contaminated food, infected droplets from during coughing and sneezing are the causes for uh, transfer of bacteria from raw food to cooked food. So what is the preventive measure? So preventive measures use color-coded chopping boards, color-coded knives, color-coded color labels like green color for vegetables, white color for dairy products, blue color for seafood, red color for meat, yellow color for chicken, brown color for ready-to-eat products. So use different color chopping boards, use color-coded labels, store it separately, 
By doing this, you can prevent cross-contamination. Next topic is food spoilage. The damage and decomposition which makes the food unfit for consumption is said to be food spoilage. But when does the spoilage begins? It begins as soon as vegetables and fruits are harvested, eggs are laid, fish is caught, animal is slaughtered, milk is drawn from the animal and this continues till the food is consumed. So how can we characterize the spoilage of food? With the smell or odor, taste, color, texture, softening, hardening, oozing of liquid and appearance. As you can see in this slide, where you can see the change of color, change of texture, change of uh, sometimes food becomes hard, soft, etc. These are the characteristics of spoilage of food. Now causes of spoilage, buying more than required quantity, buying poor quality of food at less price, insufficient inspection, inadequate storage facility, fail to maintain temperature. Now, signs of spoilage in various food products. So let's start with fish. So you can see here the accept and the checkpoints, accept. If you're purchasing fish, always check for HACCP or USPH stamps. HACCP Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, USPH United States Public Health. Check for the grading stamp, A grade, excellent quality, B grade, good quality, C grade, quality is okay. I should be bright, gill should be red in color, no odor, flesh should be fluffy, no spots, totally frozen, then only accept. In case you find there is no HACCP or USPH stamp, no grading stamp, dull or sunken eyes, gills are gray or green in color, off odor, flesh separated from the bones, find spots and partially frozen, rejected. Meat and chicken. Always check for HACCP USPH stamp, grading stamp, meat should be red in color, no odor, no spots, texture should be fluffy, totally frozen, accept. In case you find no HACCP or USPH stamp, no grading stamp, meat is green or green color, off odor, texture is slimy, spots partially frozen, you can see the color of the meat in the cases rejected. Eggs. HACCP or USPH stamp, grading stamp, there should be a pasteurization stamp which is mandatory for egg as well as dairy products. No odor, no spots, shell should be clean and intact. As you can see in the picture, accepted. But if you find no HACCP or USPH stamp, no grading stamp, no pasteurization stamp, of odor, shell is dirty, shell is broken, you find spots immediately rejected. Fruits and vegetables, HACCP and USPH stamp, grading stamp, totally ripened. No odor, texture should be firm. As you can see, the first apple on the picture, no spots, accepted. But no HACCP USPH stamp or grading stamp, over ripened or under ripened, as you can see in the picture here, off odor, bruises on the uh, app, on the veg, um, on the fruits, spots immediately rejected. Dry fruits and nuts. HACCP USPH stamp, grading stamp, proper packing, proper labeling. No odor, package should be dry, no spots, no pest infestation, no punches on the packet, accepted. No HACCP USPH stamp, no grading stamp, no proper packing, no proper labeling, off odor, the packet is wet, spots, you find pest infestation, punches on the packet, rejected. Daily products. All the three stamps should be there, has a USPH, grading and pasteurization stamp, no odor, no spots, proper packing, proper labeling, uniform color, uniform texture of the product, accepted. But if you don't find all the three stamps, like pasteurization, has a USPH, grading stamp, off odor, you find spots as you can see in the picture, no proper packing, no proper labeling, no uniform color, rejected. Canned food. 
has a USB stamp, pasteurization stamp, grading stamp, no odor, no spots, proper labeling on the can. But when you see the can, there should not be any kind of dents, no rust on the can, no pinholes, pingers, and flippers. And after you open the can, the product should have a uniform color, texture, appearance, acceptance. If you find no stamps of odor, spots, no proper labeling, and you find the can is with the dents, pinholes, flippers, springers, when you touch the lid of the can that's going down and coming up partially swollen, in that cases, better you reject it. But still in case you have purchased, if you open the can, you will find the product no, proper, no uniform color and texture. The final topic in this unit is food preservation. The basic principles for food preservation is to delay the microbial changes or to increase the shelf life of the product, to delay the self decomposition of the food, prevention or delay of purely chemical reaction like browning, which uh, you have learned in the last year second semester in science. So preservation methods. There are seven different types of preservation methods. First is asepsis, second use of high temperature, third use of low temperature, fourth removal of moisture, fifth use of preservatives, sixth modification of pH, and seventh irradiation. So let's start talking about this in detail. Asepsis. So it is the state of being free from disease causing contaminants like bacteria, virus, fungal and parasites. So the main purpose is to use of chemical solution for disinfection. So here the main purpose, you're increasing the shelf life, more nutrients and no refrigeration required because aseptic packing are portable, light in weight and shatterproof and easily transportable. Use of high temperature. In high temperature, we'll talk about blanching. We'll be talking about uh, sterilization, commercial sterilization, and pasteurization. So let's start with blanching. You are inactivating the enzyme, which are the causes of enzymatic reaction. So when you blanch these vegetables, you are preventing the color at the same time nutrients. Pasteurization. Pasteurization, heating to destroy the harmful microorganisms. Pasteurization is done for uh, juices, done for egg, done for dairy products. So it increases the flavor and keep the nutrients. Types of pasteurization. There are three types of pasteurization. First, NTLT, low temperature, long time. Temperature is 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. HDST, high temperature, short time, 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. UV or UTH, ultra high temperature, kills the bacteria to UV light. Next is sterilization, a very severe heat treatment that destroys all the microorganisms. Commercial sterilization, a severe heat treatment that destroys pathogenic pathogens and many microorganisms that could spoil food, extend shelf life, room temperature, and keeps the food stable. So we are done with high temperature, low temperature. Low temperature, we'll be talking about refrigeration or chilling and freezing. The main purpose of refrigerating the products is to keep the shelf life, making sure that bacteria doesn't multiply. So we refrigerate or we keep the products in the deep freezer refrigeration and deep freezer. Always make, make sure raw and cooked food are stored away from each other. Always have a color coded labels, have a temperature log on the top of the refrigerator or deep freezer. Do not open the refrigerator and deep freezer continuously. Do not overload the refrigerator or deep freezer. Next number three. So next number four, removal of moisture. We are removing this moisture, or you can say process of dehydration by following sun drying and dehydration. 
some drying the natural process which we generally do at homes where you are keeping the product under the sun for about a few days like chilies mangoes fish meat etc so that the moisture is lost and you can keep the product for about six months to one year but this is quite risky sometimes one drop of water can lead to spoilage of the products dehydration by using various dehydrators machines to make sure that as to make sure that you are taking out the moisture from the product it is a natural process doesn't have any control over climatic condition dry product doesn't have good quality more space is required for drying contamination from dust insects birds are major problem it is less expensive whereas this is drying whereas dehydration is an artificial process it has a control over climatic condition dry products have a good quality less space is required because it occurs within chamber sanitary conditions are controlled with a dehydration process which is more expensive so there's a lot of difference between drying and dehydration natural process this is artificial process next concentration concentration is to make sure that you are keeping the products in the brine solution so when you're keeping the products in a brine solution like cucumber or olives etc you're storing the products for about six months to one year next use of preservatives here we're using preservatives like natural preservatives and artificial preservatives natural preservatives are class one preservatives where you're using salt sugar oil class two preservatives are artificial preservatives where you're using the benzoic acid to, to keep your uh, squash or ketchup for about six months to one year artificial preservatives maybe in unit seven i'll be teaching you about artificial preservatives where you have a e number where e number should be within that limit because for colors preservatives and for various additives you have e number so we need to follow this number start number so that we are using a natural and acceptable preservatives in the nature next modification of ph and irradiation modification of ph is we are either increasing or decreasing the ph to increase the shelf life irradiation by using new technologies of packing like cap control atmosphere packing map modified atmospheric packing rfid that is radio frequency identification number when you are processing these products you are putting under various uv lights which might lead to uh, increase the shelf life of the products but these rays are harmful in course of long duration of time so before we go to the last slide very quickly i would like to revise what we have done today we have done with unit 3 Unit 3, food contamination and spoilage. Food perishable, semi-perishable, non-perishable. Perishable spoils within 4 hours. Semi-perishable spoils within 10 to 15 days. Non-perishable will spoil after 6 months to 1 year. Contaminants, when a foreign particle falls into the food, it's contaminant. Like biological, which includes microorganisms, physical, glass pieces, stones, etc., chemical, pesticides, insecticides, cleaning compounds, etc. How does this contaminant enter into the food? Through human beings, through pets, pests, chemicals, garbage, equipments. Next, cross contamination, transfer bacteria from raw food to cooked food. And they enter through chopping boards, knives, same work surfaces, hands of the cooked the handlers to infected droplets during coughing and sneezing. Preventive measure, use different color chopping boards, color coded knife, color coded labels, keep raw and cooked food away from each other, starting from purchasing till the service. Food spoilage, the damage and decomposition which makes the food unfit for consumption. Spoilage begins from the starting, that is animal slaughter, fish is caught, eggs are laid, 
milk is drawn from the cow, fruits and vegetables are harvested. So spoilage, you can identify through color, texture, flavor, appearance, etc. So the main purpose of spoilage, purchasing poor quality of food, more than required, insufficient inspection, no proper storage facility, and failing to maintain the temperature. So we have done the spoilage in various products like fish, meat and chicken, eggs, fruits and vegetables, dry fruits and nuts, dairy products, canned foods. The last topic, food preservation to increase the shelf life, delay the chemical changes, and to delay the cell decomposition of the food. We have followed the seven different uh, methods of preservations like asepsis, easy to transport, no refrigeration, long shelf life, more nutrients. Using high temperature, we have used three methods like blanching, then pasteurization, sterilization, and commercial sterilization. Then we have been talking about the third one, use of low temperature by using refrigeration and freezing. Fourth, removal of moisture by using sun drying and dehydration, where we have compared between sun drying and dehydration. Then we have done with the concentration by using brine solution, number five. Next, number six, use of preservatives, where we have used various preservatives like natural and artificial preservative, and seventh, modification of pH and irradiation, following CAP, MAP, and RFID. With this, we have completed Unit 3, Food Contamination and Spoilage. Hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you and have a great day.